What we've seen today is that some aid is trickling into the city of Gaziantep, where I am uh, right now. We visited a, a park a bit earlier today that has been converted into an emergency shelter uh, for those that have lost their homes. It's only able, though, to house 300 tents, meaning there's far greater demand. We spoke to people who did manage to get some of those precious tents, and those who are there are receiving some support. They do have heating, they do have electricity, they do have food. But as I say, there are many, many more in uh, far greater need who are very frustrated, saying things to us, look, where is the state? Where is the government? We feel like we've been abandoned here. President Erdogan is fighting for his political life right now. There are to be elections here in Turkey in three months' time. After 20 years in power, Erdogan is running for office again amid the worst humanitarian crisis on his watch. The opposition are already trying to make political capital out of this. They say the government has been too slow to respond to uh, people's needs here in the south of Turkey. That is something that's been echoed by many people uh, that we've spoken to here. Now, for his part, Erdogan's response has been to defend what the government has, had, has done so far. He's been in this city where I am, Gaziantep, a bit earlier on uh, today. He's promised money for families. He said houses will be rebuilt as soon as possible. But he's also criticised people that he says are trying to sow divisions in Turkey. And to that end, uh, a number of people have been arrested for criticising the government's response on social media. Twitter has been shut down in some areas for periods of time as well. That all indicative of the way that President Erdogan has increasingly ruled this country with an iron grip. So it'll be very interesting to see uh, how this plays out politically in the weeks and months ahead.